फाइव सेकेंड्स सर आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू यू फॉर द एड्रेस विच यू गेव अस यस्टडे इट शोड हाउ हार्ड द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैड बार्गेन्ड एंड ट्राइड टू गेट गुड टर्म्स फ्रॉम द सिक्स ऑफ द यूरोपियन इकोनॉमिक कम्युनिटी वी आर ग्रेटफुल टू हिम फॉर वॉट ही डिड आई मस्ट however confess that the ultimate picture which has emerged is hardly satisfactory each group of countries is somewhat differently affected the prime ministers of canada and new zealand have stated their views on how the present proposals affect the more developed countries president ayub whose country is faced with problems similar to ours has stated his views i largely agree with this general approach to the problem i shall naturally deal with the problems facing developing countries like india i should like to make some general remarks you mr prime minister referred in your opening remarks to the world situation the present present conflict the two world wars and the need to prevent a collision between the two great powers you also referred to europe's concern with the east west conflict we are all concerned with it every step which we now take must therefore be judged from this point of view namely whether it reduces tension between the east and the west and whether it decreases the threat of war we fear that the effect of the present proposals and the uk's entry into the european community might be the reverse and might add to the tension between the east and the west some east european countries have claimed that the european common market will lead to an extension of the nato alliance that may not be wholly correct but it may well result in the increase of tension between the east and the west the chances of this armament would grow less that would be a terrible loss for this armament will lead to greater economic progress than the creation or extension of economic communities these are considerations which should be borne in mind in the context of the wider world situation coming to the present proposals i should like to remind you mr prime minister and other prime ministers that there is need for a new approach of promoting a more healthy relationship between the developed and developing countries the un has declared the present decade as the decade of economic development declarations have been made in gat 
that immediate steps would be taken to fix terminal dates to relax tariff and other barriers and expand exports of the developing countries even some members of the six in their agreements with us in 1959 had agreed to practical measures for an increase in our exports for example of jute goods and cotton textiles to germany it was expected by us that as a result of a growing realization on their part that we could continue to import more and more from them only if we were able to export more and more we would be able to work out trading arrangements to provide growing outlets for our products on the continent this has been the general trend and approach how far does this general approach fit in with the present proposals i do not see them fitting in the present proposals are vague and the approach so far made is not satisfactory comprehensive trade agreements are a good idea but in the quest for what has been described as a balance of bargaining positions the prospects of our being able to negotiate a really worthwhile agreement with the enlarged community seem to us to have been seriously prejudiced the developing countries are struggling hard to raise the standard of living of their people and the levels of their production it is impossible for us to import machinery and capital goods necessary for our development plants unless we can increase the level of our exports we are grateful for the foreign aid which is largely in the shape of loans and credits these have to be paid back with interest we can pay them back only through increasing our exports there is no other way we are in the middle of the third five year plan the existence of trade links is important we are thinking of our fourth and fifth five year plans in our perspective planning we are naturally worried by the adverse effects of these proposals on our plans the uk's entry into the eec may well worsen the position not only in relation to our earnings of foreign exchange but in relation to unemployment and might have grave social consequences from the human point of view all this does not fit in with an international approach or an approach of get as it is generally accepted the accession of the united kingdom to the eec means some diminution of 
her sovereignty we need not be afraid of that if it leads to a world order stop